Okay, uh, hi everybody, my name is Alexei Semeny and uh, I'm the founder of Dev Team Space and Dev Team Space is an AI and software development service. So, uh, actually not many of you know that even large companies these days have built their minimum viable products and prototypes with the help of more developers or agencies. And actually very few people know that even recent billion dollar company Slack uh, has built their mobile applications and, <laughs> and uh, their mobile applications including the design with the help of San Francisco based agency and uh, there are lots of companies like that, uh, there's just a number of them, uh, very large one and as you can imagine there are even more companies which are smaller who have done it successfully. However, uh, despite Lots of these companies having success with this model. Uh, lots of the companies actually having no success with this model, and uh, you can handle like the ownership and the legal issue. But three major issues still exist. So it's really hard to find and select great developers for your product. It is still a big pain in communication sector, and you really can't predict if the developers how great they are. Doesn't matter if they will deliver on schedule or not. And in depth in space, uh, we tackle all these three problems and we solve them with a specific process and the automation implementation. So uh, let's go through that. Uh, so basically, uh, let's start with the method of the developers. So if you would go for the standard software development uh, platforms, you would find a network of thousands of developers and then tens or hundreds of applicants for your uh, project then you need to select the correct uh, process to work with. Uh, without that, uh, without platform, we have a network of dedicated development team, uh, and we have a very tight network, just around 50 development teams. Each team is 10 to 50 people, and uh, work on a specific technology stack over the uh, five to 10 years. So our development team are pretty much equally uh, qualified to work with our customers, and. Uh, Here is where the magic starts. Uh, when we receive the project from our, our customer, we apply uh, a special uh, process and request additional information from the customer. After that, our project manager loads it into our system. And in less than 24 hours, we have the best match out of our network based on the experience of the development team, their availability, and some other uh, metrics. We have the best match for the specific project and they start working together. Uh, the next automation part in our platform is the automated project manager. As you know, again, the communication is a big problem and our automated pro project manager essentially is a smart dashboard. Uh, on the left side, uh, you see pretty much standard situation when uh, there's like information about the project and the development team. And the right side is actually a little bit different. It has the progress uh, bar and a roadblock tracking and daily updates directly from developers. Uh, our automated project manager automatically notifies uh, the development team every day uh, to post the updates on the dashboard at a specific time or to start a new project if the clients needed a new one. And it also notifies automatically the client uh, to read these automated uh, notifications from the developers and uh, check for roadblocks if there are any. In a sense, we force the developers and the client to communicate on a daily basis, no matter if they ask for that or not. Uh, we also have a project summary page, uh, which is available both to the development team and to the client, and allows you to run multiple projects, and each of the projects can be performed by a different development team. And it gives you the pretty much clear overview of the roadblocks, what is the progress. And we've been around for more than a year testing the system before the public launch. We drastically improved the communication uh, with this process. We cut down any possible delays and we really uh, figured out that this system helps to deliver outstanding results faster and less resources. And one of the examples, uh, basically it's testimony of one of our clients uh, who have five different projects with us on three, three different technology stacks. Before implementing the system, we had uh, large delays 
uh, basically over two months because of the communication <coughs> issues. After we implemented the system with all these push notifications and communication, uh, we have delays zero. So currently we work uh, on scaling the system and getting out there, presenting events like this and helping more exciting startups to get things rolling. Thank you. Where is the, the team located and how do you deal with IPE related issues? Uh, so the question is where they are located and how do we deal with IPE related issues? Well, I'm actually not quite sure I understand like what, is, what do you mean by the IPE related issues? Intellectual property like... Oh, okay, got it. <coughs> the different IPs. Okay, got it. Yeah, so, uh, uh, intellectual property is not an issue at all because basically there are lots of tools uh, which these days help you to like own everything, you can use Bitbucket, uh, repository, store everything in the cloud. Some people go to the limits and like force to work some more development teams through the VPN and all sorts of stuff. You can do that, but in majority of cases, it is really enough to have a proper local, uh, properly designed uh, legal agreement with the United States based entity, which we are, and uh, to have the process to mind so. Uh, how clients actually own the access to the, the back of the repository or wherever the repository they use and to all the information. Additionally to that, on our dashboards, we actually do not load the uh, information itself to that. We just allow clients to uh, insert the links to the project attachments. So whoever they share the information with, uh, they will have the access. If not, they will not. And in terms of the development teams, we currently work with development teams from Eastern Europe and Russia. Uh, basically, it's just because of uh, my cultural uh, background. I'm originally from Russia, Siberia, and uh, the quality of the development teams out there. As we all know, the market here is overheated for sure. You'll find very expensive developers, but not so skilled. Uh, all very qualified developers, but they cost a lot, and not all of the startups can afford it or start a new company. And what we see that in the op in opposite, in Eastern Europe and Russia, uh, we see lots of talented teams, uh, as I mentioned, so with people with five to ten years of uh, development experience, great folks, and they don't have enough demand, and they always open for new projects. And currently, it's not like in the 2000s where you would find that local specialists are extremely knowledgeable with all the latest technologies and guys from Europe are not. Uh, it's like 15 years passed by and now we actually see the opposite, like folks from Ukraine or Belarus or Russia, uh, Lithuania, they would come up with some kind of incredible technologies, especially actually using uh, some AI stuff and image recognition. Um, you heard some success, late, uh, success stories, and they would open for what we developers. So that's why we got the focus there. But we also open for development teams uh, from all across the world. We currently have a couple of uh, folks from the United States as well. I mean, a couple of development teams. We have time for one more question. Yep. Um, what's the attrition rate like for your room? Developers, I, I can I can imagine that the, the, the developer thing is kind of dirty and managed by 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 machine learning. Of course, of course, of course, of course, you communicate with the dust and the dust and the dust and the dust. Uh, so I'm not sure that I got the question correctly. Right, but let me try to so basically, you're asking like, uh, what's the issue? The developers, of course, communicate by machine. Well, I, I, I this sounds great for the for the for the for the. For the for the client, I guess, but for the developers, this may this may not be enjoyable at all. Yes, I can. So it's enjoyable for the developers to communicate before the machine. Uh, that's a good question. So basically, actually, uh, it's not just the machine. We have two project managers uh, following the project. One is a general project manager who is on the side of a client and always ready to answer or like help to start additional projects from the same client. Uh, and on the side of the developers, they have their, uh, usually all the development teams work with, they have project manager in the house, in the same office, and they basically communicate with the developers in the beginning of the work. Uh, our system is just a necessary tool which allows to streamline the communication. 
and there were any delays, but we didn't see like the real tests. We didn't see any of the results where the developers would be unhappy with it. That's actually quite happy. <laughs> Thank you.